Hi everyone, this is Raden Wijaya. Today I'm going to discuss about multi-trading applications. First, we'll need to understand what is a thread. Thread is a lightweight process that branches from the main process. However, a thread shares resources and executes together with the process. That means all the variable that is on the process can be read and write from the thread. This will require an operating system that supports for multi-trading. However, it doesn't require multi-core CPU, but a multi-core CPU will help. In order to understand this video, you will need to have certain prerequisite knowledge. For example, you need to understand pointer, link list, queue. You will need to understand intermediate level of programming logic, intermediate level understanding of C and Linux. And also you need to be able to compile with makefile because if you don't use makefile the text will be too long I think and you will need to understand that your compilation will need pthread directive what are the advantages of heavy multi-threaded applications over a single threaded applications it lies on the hardware modern CPUs contains a lot of cores they can contain 8 maybe 16 cores if a software is made multi-threaded, it can utilize all that cores and results in a lot faster processing and more fluid user interface. However, a lot of modern applications does not support multi-threading. There are certain problems related to multi-threading. The hardest thing is how you divide the thread for your program. For example, when you are making a program, there are certain tasks that is done by thread and the task is really fast and there are tasks that are really slow or there are tasks that are always active. Generally speaking, you should always separate a thread to a task that is always exist, always running. For example, when you are doing game, okay, you have sound, you can just dedicate a thread to sound. So you have nice and fluid music, you have nice and fluid surround sound because you have a whole CPU core for you and you can have the AI of the game with on a separate thread so you will have a fluid user interface your player will move very fluid and the AI will also move very fluid and it will kill you at its best however maybe we can also add several AIs for example if you are playing a games like World of Warcraft, okay, you have three on your side and the other three on the AI side, okay, you have, can assign each of the thread to one AI. However, the problem arises when the number of CPU core is actually less than the number of thread. For example, if you are playing a certain game like a Starcraft, I think, yeah, you can have like eight players at once, okay, for and you have like 16 core CPU so one for sound 8 for no not 8 7 for AI one for your interface okay however when the number of processors is reduced to like say 8 8 core for you will have some one for processor is for sound Maybe you have two processors for driving your display via graphic card, of course. And then you just left with four processors for your AI. And these four processors will have be divided, their time will be divided by seven enemies that you will fight. What will this come to? This will make your gameplay experience different. For example, like if you have like 16 cores, the AI can utilize all the processing power from each thread. Therefore, they will play smarter and harder. When you have only like four cores divided by seven AIs, they will have like about half of the processing power that the former previously have and of course, this will make them more stupid because they cannot think as sharp as long as they 
can be. However, for certain application, dividing the task is quite easy. For example, if you are encoding video or audio, for example, you want to encode four minutes audio, okay, and you have like four cores. Just divide this audio to one, 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 and it, it's okay. And they dedicate this one to this thread, this thread, this thread, this thread. So, in theory, this will speed up the audio encoding process four times faster compared to when you just doing it in one thread. Therefore, the solution for this problem the, is not always the same because you have to think so many level. The first thing that we need to understand before we can begin multi-threading programming is to understand mutex. It's called mutually exclusive. The mutex is used to prevent race condition. And now I explain you about race condition. Okay. For example, there are two threads. Okay, thread A, thread B. Okay, and there are a variable i, and the value is five. Thread A wanted to reduce the value to four. Okay. Well, thread B, this thread need to retrieve the value. When they are running, we have no idea when will thread A read and when will thread B read. Okay, the timing could be crashed. So thread A will lock this value 5, lock, reduce to 4, release the lock, and then thread B can read it. That's very simple. And the other race condition that is a little bit more complicated is happening when both thread A and B wanted to reduce this value. For example, this is 5. Okay. From what I explained just now, okay, thread B received that the value is 4. Correct, right? Now thread B wanted to reduce it to by 2. So thread B will lock this thread, okay, lock this variable, lock this with mutex, and then reduce it by 2. The value is 2. This is correct. For example, if there are no mutex, okay, we don't know when how this thing will work, right? So thread A reduce it by 4. However, thread B is already reading it as 5. So in the eye of the thread B, the value is 5. So reduce by 4, uh, by, sorry, reduce by 2, it will become 3. However, thread A thinks that the value is actually become 4. This thing meant that both thread is not synchronized. So the value, the shared variable is not synchronized. And we must not allow this to happen because the application might crash because we don't know the value, the correct value. They don't, don't know. Then their communication will be messed up. It's as simple as that. Condition is used to make a thread wait. For example, if an application have five threads, okay? Four is the child thread and one is the main thread, okay? The main thread is doing something and the main thread want all of these four to wait. Usually it happens like, okay, this is doing process, doing process, and doing process. Well, all of them processing, it will stumble upon a bit thread condition wait because this need the data from here. And then this main process will do whatever it needs to, for example, reading file or waiting for input or anything else. And when the main thread is done, it will broadcast a condition, bit thread condition broadcast to all of them so they can continue processing. I'm explaining to you about the built-in function. The first is pthread create. pthread create is just as its name suggests it will create a thread. Okay, I'll explain to you the most important is the first parameters is used to catch the resulting thread. Okay, the resulting thread will be kept as a variable by the parent process. And param number three. This is a pointer to a method where the thread starts. For example, okay, you split this process, okay, split to two. Okay, this is the main process and this is the thread. This thread must begin somewhere and that's the process, the procedure or function or method or whatever it is where the thread starts. Remember, you have to put a star sign on the method name because it must be a pointer method. And then you'll have a p thread exit. This will exit current thread, just like terminate. However, they're wanting that these different 
the exiting thread must be catch, must be caught by the main process or the parent's thread. For example, you have a thread like this split into two. Okay, this one terminates, and this one must catch that with using p thread join. So the thread will join again. There are four mutex functions that I use in the example apps. First and second is the mutex init and mutex destroy. This will both initialize and destroy the mutex identifier. And the second is are mutex lock and mutex unlock. This will be used to lock the mutex so that every other application that is stumbled upon this mutex lock will wait for the first mutex caller to finish and unlock the thread. You must use mutex lock and unlock before you read or write shared variable. Let me tell you about condition functions. Okay, there are two condition functions that is pretty important. First is pre thread condition wait. For example, you have two threads, okay? This thread will reach condition wait. Okay, it will stop. Just like if and sleep. If true or well true, sleep. And this one, this main thread, okay, will do whatever it needs before this thing can continue. After it's done, it will broadcast condition to this P thread or any other thread that is spawned by this process and then this thread will continue so that's the condition function how condition function works in the example application i will simulate a bank queue in a bank that have three trailers okay and each teller is represented by one thread and a queue of customer okay the queue of customer will be done in just one thread so total we have four threads the teller have a working hour for example t teller one will have t one seconds and two teller three have t three seconds of working and we have a customizable time for deposit and withdrawal from customer okay the deposit time is td and withdrawal time is tw deposit and withdrawal process will be simulated by sleep so for example when the application okay this one is the main thread and this one is the teller thread okay this one queue and give this thread a customer, okay? And this thread will go to sleep and continue again after it's finished. So when this thread is giving this customer, it gets with sleep. This thread gives the customer, will sleep. Okay, this thread gives a customer, it will sleep and then will wake up again. The sleeping time depends on the deposit time and withdrawal time. Those with deposit time and withdrawal time is specified on the parameters when the program is run and the customer will arrive every tc time okay so when the customer is waiting this thread will sleep as well so this one three it will sleep and when it's wake up it will send customer it will sleep and it will send customer actually i can just simply using infinite loop to simulate the customer arrival however i think it's just a waste of resource because actually the application is doing nothing so i think it's better just use sleep on this page you can see the main process this is the most important code for every multi-trading software why because this is where we create the child threads without this creation there won't be any multi-trading system okay we can see the on process number on process number equals zero it means this process is the parent process when on process number one two or three it means the process that thread is child we can see the while loop here process number less than or equal max teller of course it's one two or three and we have thread params process number minus one because we calculate from zero but the number is one two three so we have to make adjustment okay thread number equals process number and then the most important things we call p thread create p thread create and we have called teller the method and we pass the thread parameters this thread parameters called then process number and this will tell that the thread you are child because you are one you are two you are three that's your process number after the main process finished creating all the child threads, the main process will then execute customer process. 
this is where the main process will handle all the queuing okay now we can see it's a simple while loop where we will read customer file and then okay write the logs and this is the most important thing we have pthread mutex log and condition broadcast and mutex unlock why simple because every time we read from the file all the three childs the track will race to the queue so we will tell them okay the queue is locked you stop okay and they will wait of course because we have the pit thread condition wait and then it will okay done locking broadcast you may move this will move this two is still locking because of the mutex condition yeah afterwards unlock they will run again like normal this is how it works it's quite simple but it's quite complicated and then by the end of customer process this thing will end after finish reading all the file we will do bitrate joins because all the three child is now exiting once they exit we'll catch all the threads into one process again so the program will exit gracefully with no error codes hopefully now that you have understood how the main process works. It's time to delve into the child threads. We will begin by Tyler part one. It was quite straightforward actually. You can see here on the top of the page, you have P thread mutex lock, and then we access shared variable. Why? Why locking? Because it's used to prevent the race condition that I've described before. And then we'll do sleep sleep is used to simulate whatever process they do actually you can do like database access you can access file you can do something like making a complex mathematical calculation or whatever it is but because we are just doing it simply we just put sleep to simulate them okay and then write teller log as usual why it's not mutex because I already put more text condition on the red teller logs on the separate methods so I don't have to put the thread more text again there and then finally we have access to the shared variable again modify it and of course it's between a block of log mutex as the specification requires that a child thread has a limited time span we must come with a way to check whether the child thread has reached its end of life. How? By creating another thread that counts time. That's time. Yeah. Very easy, right? And then when the time has come, it will then check if there are no more customers and the number of child threads is more than one, then it will terminate itself. However, if the, that is the last child, it will still continue processing until all the customer has been processed. The teller threads creates another child threads. Let's call it the grandchild threads because it's a child of a child threads. Okay, so the grandchild threads knows exactly its parents. So it's got parents number here, and then it will lock the wait. It will lock the shared info. So. Okay, everybody freeze, something like that. Okay, and then if the parent is still active, okay, it will unlock the shared info and it will then tell that the parent must terminate. Afterwards, it will continue broadcast. Okay, everybody can walk in and then it will unlock the condition weight. Actually, it was quite complicated because what I'm trying to do is detecting whether a parent has crashed. I believe now that you've understand that you must always lock your mutex before you read or write into a file, before you read or write into shared variables, before you read or write into database, and before you read or write into whatever is shared between those threads and then you must release them afterwards. Why? Because if you don't release them, your threads will stop responding. I hope that you understand my video. 
If you have a question, just drop me on the comments below. If you need the source codes, it will be available on the descriptions below. And I really hope that you like my video and I really hope that this video is useful for you. And don't forget to subscribe and like and have a nice day and wish you all the best.